Just between you and me, boss. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Richter? so much! Hello, my lovelies! My name is Avalika Kay, and welcome to Your Dry Delight. This time we're going to be doing Leslie's route. <laughs> Leslie's route. We did Meyer's route last time, so if you guys missed that, make sure you go back and watch that episode. Pause this one right now. There's an eye icon in the top right corner that'll let you go watch that episode if you need to. Have a quick, easy link to it. But, without further ado, we're going to pick the options that lead us to Leslie's ending. And I'm going to skip all the text that we've done before, so that's all text that we've already done. Um, we've already been inside this one before, so spit it out, swallow it. This time we're gonna spit it out because it was disgusting. Puh! I spray my drink all over the man next to me. Unfortunate man. Hey, what's the big idea, you yutz? Yutz is a Yiddish word that refers to an idiotic jerk or annoying person. S sorry Jesus, that's bad. What does Ed do in his bathtub? Actually, I don't want to answer that. Alright, so that was that decision. One's enough for me, is there any better stuff? So, nope, we're gonna say one's enough because we did better stuff last time. Well, to be honest, one of Ed's specials is all about all the Ed I can take. <laughs> is that so? You seem like someone who can take quite a bit more. I think you're just being humble. No, really, I like my tongue too much to put it through more of Satan's mouthwash. My dry comment makes a stranger chuckle. Oh, so that's the problem. Well, never fear, I'll take good care of your tongue of yours. Alright, so we, again, have been through that one already. Yup, back and forth. Uh, whiskey, I don't know, something sweet. This time we'll say whiskey. Whiskey, of course. Do I look like a guy who drink anything else? You don't seem to have too much trouble with the other drinks you've enjoyed. You didn't seem to have much trouble with the other drinks you've enjoyed tonight. That's because you were distracting me. Really? Am I that captivating? You were practically holding me captive from the start, so yes. <laughs> he lets out a low chuckle, shaking his head. There's something charming about his laugh. Maybe the way it comes from deep in his chest. It's gentle, but resonant. Whiskey it is then, and only the best, and only the best kind. As a mensch deserves, what's a mensch? Mensch is a Yiddish term that literally means man, but it can be used to refer to women as well. It's a compliment used to describe someone who's honorable and compassionate. Mensch. Okay, so an honorable, compassionate person. Uh, I'll make sure to take excellent care of both you and your fine palates. You're acting like I've already made up my. Uh, you're leaving. Okay, so we've we've already done that before. Alright, so this time we're going to be honest and tell Leslie that he flirted with us, and then we're going to go with the party to with Leslie. Uh, he may have been flirting with me. He what? He raises his voice incredulously, jaw dropping. Well, could have been that I was just misreading things, but the nerve! Unacceptable! Leslie pushes out of his chair and begins to pace around the office. I can't tell if he's genuinely angry or if just fussing like he normally does. How dare he- Flirting with my junior partner! Really? That's the issue you have with it? Poor, small, defenseless little- Poor, small, defenseless little Richter at the mercy of some cruel gangster. If only I'd been there. I'm bigger than you, boss. This Meyer had better watch out. Mark my wor Boss! Mm -hmm. He freezes when I call out to him in frustration. Well, when he gives me that innocent did I do something wrong expression, I can't really stay annoyed, can I? Would you just- Please sit down so I can finish my reports. Oh, you weren't finished. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sheepishly clearing my throat, Leslie sinks back into his chair and nods for me to continue. Meyer offered me a deal for information. A deal? You're serious? I nod, barely registering. Oh, okay, so this part we also already did. I can't say I agree with Leslie about the speakeasy deal. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's a key part of all of this. But, I think he's right about the hotel party, if the gossip flows as freely as the liquor. And I believe it or not, and believe it or not, I'd like to spend more time on the job with him. Watching Leslie work is quality entertainment in and of itself. Okay boss, you won me over. Party it is. Atta boy, Richter! Leslie spins around in his chair at top speed, apparently thrilled by my reply. Hopefully our supervisor doesn't decide to walk in right now. I think I'll send someone to the speakeasy anyway, just to scope it out again. That place has got to be important somehow. Ignoring the spinning Leslie, I- Ignoring the spinning Leslie, I rub my cheek thoughtfully and gaze at the ceiling, pondering the situation. If another agent can get some sort of information from the place, maybe we can combine it with tonight's findings to form a better plan. I'll call Earl and tell him to head over there while we're at the party. Well, good thing there's plenty of paperwork to keep us busy for the rest of the day. A whole stack of reports arrived this morning, actually. I was getting worried when you came in so late, so I thought I'd have to do it all myself. Good thing we're a team. Right, boss? Boss? Hmm. He is probably asleep. I glance over at Leslie, who's gone silent. He's still slowly spinning in his chair, head slumped back. Uh, is he... He's snoring. Oh, God. If I had a dime for every time this happened, I'd be a rich man. But no, all I have is this mass pile of paperwork. Ugh. 
As Leslie enjoys his morning nap, I bury myself in the reports, poring over them one by one. Those bastards, lucky I have such a soft spot for him. Otherwise, I'd tap him out of that- I'd tip him out of that damn chair and throw these papers in his face. He always looks so peaceful when he's sleeping, though. Not a care in the world, innocent as a kitten. That's my dashing senior partner, all right. Aww, that's so sweet. As evening finally rolls around, I managed to finish up the paperwork. Leslie woke up in time to help me with the last third, and we head out to the party. Okay. Our taxi takes us to a lavish hotel, an appropriate place for a fancy gala like tonight's. When we get to the crowded parlor, Leslie and I decide to split up, so I'm left alone with a smattering of chatty guests dressed to the nines. That means very fancily dressed. I wander around for a while, trying to keep my distance while attempting to spot anyone of note, but it's too crowded for my strategy to work. I'm going to have to get into the thick of it, aren't I? Working at these events is always a nightmare. Mingle with the partygoers, eavesdrops on the politicians. Mmm, politicians only do so much. I think the partygoers are going to be more interesting. I might pick up some useful tidbits if I get closer to the guests. They sure sound chatty. Wine will do that to you. Alright, stuffing my hands in my pockets, I casually stroll by a couple standing near the fireplace, turning into their- tuning into their conversation. Well, 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 if you are just the prettiest little doll in a dress. Hehehe, <laughs> you trying to sweet talk me? No, no, I'm just telling the truth. You remind me of the vamp just a little <laughs> wider, that's all. One of the earliest movie sex symbols was a silent movie actress named Theta Barra. She earned the, her nickname The Vamp from playing a score of sexually predatory femme fatale roles. Oh, nice. What? How dare you? Get lost. I'm through with you, you cad. Ha! <laughs> what a charmer. Reminds me of my own lack of love life. It's tough to... It's a tough time to find... It's tough to find the time, let alone a dame who seems worth chasing. Love's just too hard to worry about, isn't it? Especially since I've already got my hands full with Leslie. God only knows I could look... If I, how I could look after someone else, too. I do get a little lonely now and then, though, but I guess that's just part of the job. Huh? Wait, what am I standing around brooding for? Damn it, I didn't come here to feel sorry for myself. I can do that at home. <laughs> it's so sad and self-deprecating. Sighing to myself, I turn around and start scoping out a more promising group to join. Richter! A sing-song voice suddenly calls out my name, floating over the loud chatter of all the guests. A very familiar sing-songy voice. Boss? Boss, you... Ah, there you are. Whoa. <laughs> Leslie comes half stumbling towards me, crashing right into my arms. I managed to catch him, considering he's lighter than a paperweight, but I can't get him to stay upright. He keeps slumping back onto me, not even attempting to stand straight. Boss, what the hell? Are... Oh my god, what are you doing? Shh, not so loud. We're <laughs> blending in, Richter. Blending in. He's completely smoked, isn't he? I can already guess what's happened. Leslie can barely handle a single drink, and the champagne's flowing like the Nile here. Quick, take me to the broom closet. Boss, what are you- Shh. He presses a finger to my lips, glaring at me indignantly. I found something out. Important things, but we need privacy and somewhere I can <laughs> put my feet up. I don't know if I should be impressed or concerned that he got drunk so quickly. Well, it's not like I can really drag him in home in this state, can I? What am I gonna do with you? Muttering to myself in disbelief, I help Leslie down the hall, away from the rest of the party. Luckily, it seems like the hotel staff planned ahead. A number of the doors are unlocked and open. For situations just like this one, no doubt. We end up in a dark room, and I kick the door closed after dragging Leslie inside. A broom closet. You're off your rocker, boss. Deciding to deposit my senior partner onto the bed, I move us towards it and gently nudge him onto the covers. Maybe he'll just decide to fall asleep. Ugh. Oi, oi, I said I had important things to tell you. Before I can step away, Leslie grabs my wrist and tugs me down onto the bed. Sits. What, is this some kind of impromptu meeting? Leslie leans back against the pillows and gives me a hazy smirk, nodding. His legs are stretched out across my lap and he's still got his shoes on. He'll get dirt on the bedspread at this rate. Oh, taking off my boots. You're too good to me. I don't deserve a partner like you, Richter. I really don't. Someone's got to take care of you. True, true. I don't envy that someone. Because <laughs> I'm so high maintenance. Our relationship is a running joke between us, but I've never been unhappy with how things are. Leslie takes care of me too in his own little ways. Buying me food, teaching me French on the weekends, making me stay home, and bringing soup to me every time I'm sick. Whenever I need him, he's always there. Hello, Richter. Anybody home? Leslie snaps his fingers in front of my face, giggling to himself. You've been staring at me for, oh, about 30 seconds. That's because I was thinking about what a big fat hypocrite you are. Hypocrites? Me? Razzing me this morning for being hungover, but here you are, fried off your mind. Well, nobody's perfect. Not even me. He pouts, fluffing up the pillows behind his back and attempting to knit his brow into a serious expression. It doesn't work very well. 
I found out who's behind the booze at tonight's party. In fact, it sounds like he's pulling all the strings in Cleveland. You're serious, who is it? A fella called Eastman, biggest name in this in the whole city's underworld. Meyer Eastman. Ah, uh, my breath catches. Does that mean the man from last night was... No, that's probably not the same one. Leslie shakes his head as if reading my thoughts. He's tall, really short hair, likes to wear a long coat, low distinctive laugh. It's him. Uh. We stare at each other for several seconds, unsure of what to make of the revelation. I can't believe I was actually drinking with a mob boss last night, let alone one who propositioned me for cake. But what surprises me most is he wasn't a bad guy. How's that? Leslie blinks when I unconsciously mutter my thoughts aloud. Meyer. He wasn't rude or intimidating, and he sure as hell didn't try to throw his weight around like you'd think. I guess I'm just thrown off by how normal he seemed, like a regular Joe, not someone in the Mafia. Hmm. Rather than poking fun at me, Leslie gently nods, exhaling, exhaling a quiet sigh. Apparently he's pretty well liked around here. Doesn't usually resort to violence either. They say he's got a golden tongue, and he always manages to work out a deal to make everyone happy. I don't know how much of it's true, but if it is, then the recent fights around Little Italy may make more sense. You mean the crazy reports we've gotten recently? Nah, the very same. The Italian gangs are probably trying to regain the turf they've lost. He's right. Half of the reports I got today were all about action on the east side of town. Meyer's men must really be putting pressure on them. Just how much of a foothold does he have in Cleveland? Hmm. Leslie rolls over on the bed, a glum shadow setting on his normally bright features. I expected him to be cheery about this new lead, not so grim. What's gotten into him? You know, Richter, sometimes I don't know if we're doing the right thing. His voice drops to a soft, hesitant murmur, the first time I've ever heard him so unsure of himself. Boss? You know, helping enforce prohibition. My shock must be obvious because Leslie lets out a wry laugh. I bet that sounds too rich coming from a drunk sap like me. You probably think I'm nuts, but to tell you the truth, I've never been certain of it all. Is it really the government's job to tell folks what they can and can't drink? Will a dry America really be a better place to live? Seeing folks enjoying themselves and relaxing like tonight makes me think liquor's not just for fun. It's part of our culture, our customs. It's not just about getting drunk, it's about the freedom to drink, just like anything else. Freedoms we fought for since the colonists came over here in those big, stupid boats. He glances away with a self-deprecating, wistful smile. Not the- now that I think about it, he's been a lot less enthusiastic about this job than our previous work. Now I guess I know why. Did I ever tell you how much I wanted to be an FBI agent, Richter? Once, I think. Hm. Mom and Dad, they always told me to keep at it. I think they believed in me more than I did. They didn't know why I wanted to hunt the bad guys so badly. The bad guys? He nods solemnly, eyes clouded over with memory. My parents were saints, but some of my friends? They weren't so lucky. A few had mothers or fathers who'd taken to the bottle and, well... The ones who didn't have marks on their bodies had them in their minds. It crushed me, seeing it happen to the people I cared for, being so powerless to stop it. That's why when the Volstead Act rolled around, I was all for it. Surely, surely it stopped the same thing from happening to other kids. Mm -hmm. Leslie slowly trails off. Our gazes meet for a long, somber moment. Mm -hmm. But I guess I'm starting to grow up now. I knew people will always find a way to th find an another thing to abuse. Mm -hmm. Something like liquor, something so core to society. You can't ever really get rid of it. So should we be the ones to help take it away? Away from the people who drink for fun over dinner to celebrate because they damn well please? Soldiers who lost their arms and legs fighting in the war but came home to hear they can't even enjoy a shot of bourbon? I just don't know. He lets out another sigh, this one deep and troubled. His eyes shut tight, almost like he's trying to fall asleep again. You're not crazy, boss. Leslie stares at me like he's just sprouted wings. Well, maybe a little crazy, but for different reasons. About what you said, though, the more I think about it, it's hard for me to argue. I hesitate for a moment. Normally, I don't open up this much to people, but tonight's proving to be a strange night. And in front of Leslie, I don't feel like I have to hold anything back. My pa, he drank. I guess it's all he had since, since my ma died having me. Probably why he took off when I was a kid, left me with my grandparents. Richter! Leslie's fingers reached out to brush my sleeve, lightly squeezing the fabric. Hey, don't feel sorry for me. They were good folks, traditional views aside. Grandpa, he was always muttering about how the law is what makes man better than beast. Every single time he read the police reports, he'd say that without fail. The law is the highest order to uphold on earth, Grandpa thought. Aside from the Bible, that is. So, little Richter got that drilled into his head, didn't he? I nod, smirking faintly. No crime headlines to read in heaven, Grandpa. You must be pretty bored up there. He waited. He wanted me to be a policeman, but luckily detective work was close enough to count. When it comes to prohibition, though, I've always had my own doubts. Maybe the law makes us better than beasts, but the government's not the gospel. I don't know. It doesn't feel right to follow orders just because they're from the top. 
I joined the agency to help people, not make their lives harder. Anything that goes against that, I... I just can't put my heart into it. Feds or no. By the time the last word leaves my mouth, I feel like a complete idiot. Just because Leslie shared his story didn't mean I had to go and babble on. It's like I'm an old church lady or something. Ugh. You know, Richter, I really admire you. Hmm? Leslie smiles warmly at me when I glance at him in shock. Where'd that come from, I wonder? Unlike most folks, you don't always take things at face value. You stop and think, you feel instead of only judging. Maybe you should be the senior partner. Then I'd feel better about relying on you so much. I think you- Ooh, excuse me. I think you've gotten raw, boss. I'm just a regular old- No, no, there's nothing regular about you. Not to me, anyway. No, you're a special breed of fantastic. Hmm. He doesn't normally give me these genuine compliments. How the hell am I supposed to respond to that? I admire you too, boss. Er, what I mean is, I- Oh? Oh? Please, do tell me more. Well, now I've gone and done it. I can tell he's not going to let me go away with it. Get away with this one, so I'd better come up with something quick. I guess I really admire how dedicated you are. How adorable you are. Absolutely the second one. How, how adorable you can be sometimes. Sleeping, spinning in your chair, stuffing your face with cake. Oh? Christ, did those words actually come out of my mouth? I haven't had a single drink tonight, so there's no excuse, none at all. God rest my soul. Oh, so you finally noticed. It's about time. I was preparing drastic measures to get your attention. Drastic me- Drastic me- <laughs> They're not important now, though, since apparently I've won you over after all. He cackles, obviously pleased with himself. N this is why I shouldn't give compliments. Oi, Richter. Leslie's tone suddenly turned serious again, almost too serious. Now that we've poured our hearts out to each other, I need to tell you something important. What's that? Well, I'm not gonna just bellow it out. It's a secret. Lean down. He impatiently beckons me closer. Curious, I scoot towards the head of the bed, listening, leaning in to listen. I'm not sure what he could possibly be, so- uh, A hand grabs the back of my hair and he pulls me down. The next thing I know- <gasps> Oh my god, I love it so much. He's so super duper pale. Oh my god, that's okay. It's like me and Austin. <laughs> oh my god, I'm such a pale white person. Leslie's soft lips press against mine. The boss is... He's... This can't be happening. Did I fall asleep? Leslie holds the kiss for a little longer, fingers tightly curled in my hair. But after a few seconds, he lets go. I quickly pull back, touching a hand to my lips. A mortified look of horror instantly crosses Leslie's face. I don't think he realized what he was doing either. R Richter, I- I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to- the, the booze, I just- He covers his face with his hands, peeking at me through his fingers. I think it looks like I'm going to start- He thinks I'm going to start shouting at him. What, am I that scary? One kiss doesn't hurt anybody, does it? After a moment of hesitation, I lean closer to Leslie, gently pulling his hands away from his face. He's so wide-eyed and embarrassed, I'd better savor this look because he doesn't wear it often. Just between you and me, boss. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Richter. Ah, I love it so much! This time, I'm the one who kisses Leslie, pressing him into the bed. His hand flits back to my hair, fingers gab grabbing and pulling a lot rougher than his normal ruffles, that's for sure. Mm. He lets out a soft winter whimper when I nip and suckle his bottom lip, playfully tucking, tugging at it with my teeth. So, Richter's never kissed before, but he's already knows how to, like, do lip plays and, like, be sassy and cute. Usually when you're first kissing somebody because you've never kissed anybody else before, you are horrible and you have to practice kissing because you suck at it. So we'll just live in this anime world where he's suddenly perfect at it, even though he's never kissed before. Because I enjoy thinking that he's just naturally perfect at kissing. We share a string of light kisses, but I can't help keep myself from teasing my tongue into his mouth, savoring his little mules of delights. That's so sweet. I'm in a daze myself. We've always had a close relationship, me and Leslie, but neither of us ever dared to push beyond that unspoken line. But as I cover Leslie's lips with kisses, finally embracing him the way I've always dreamed of doing, I can't deny how satisfying it feels. I care so much for him, more than anything or anyone else. Boss, partner, friend, lover, does it really matter? He's here with me, he wants me, and that's all I can bring myself to care about. Let <clears throat> Our lips press together harder, forcing me to steal breaths in between Leslie's needy kisses. He's really getting into it. Is that his thigh rubbing between my legs? 100% it is. I swear, he's so unfairly adorable that I can't help myself. If I don't know... If I didn't know he was drunk, I don't think I'd be able to keep my hands off him. <laughs> 
Finally, I draw back just enough to suck in some much-needed air. Leslie nuzzles against my ear, murmuring softly against it. I hope I won't forget this in the morning, but if I do, you have my permission to remind me. Uh, yeah, sure. The full extent of what we did suddenly hits me like a frying pan in the face. <laughs> I pull away one more time, jerking upright and letting out a cough, turning my head awkwardly to one side. We're sure gonna be interesting tomorrow, huh? How the hell can we resume normal business after this? I sure hope I didn't just make the dumbest mistake of my life. Maybe we should, uh, leave the hotel and head home. It's getting pretty late, don't you think, boss? <laughs> I still glance back at Leslie, unsure of how he'll respond. Leslie. Uh. His chest slowly rises and falls, and quiet breaths flutter out from his parted lips. You think I would have seen this one coming. Yeah, he's already passed out. Hardcore. With a sigh, I slide off onto the floor, leaning back against the side of the bed. I guess I'll keep vigil, er, vigil and mull things over until Leslie wakes up. Thanks to his insistent touching, I can't exactly fall asleep right now. Ah. <sighs> It's a good way to spend the night. Well, whatever happens after tonight, I can't say I have any regrets. You're really something, boss, that's for sure. And I like you just the way you are. Hypocrisy, narcolepsy, and all. I wouldn't have it any other way. That is adorable. Ugh. Mm. I stumble into the office bright and early, letting out a long yawn. I haven't pulled an all-nighter like that since my college days, and now I understand why. Slumping into my chair, I glug down my coffee and try to slap myself awake. We've got work to do today, so hopefully Leslie isn't too late. I dropped him off around 4am at his apartment, but he managed to get more sleep than I did. Ugh. You know, maybe I should just go bring the whole coffee pot in here. I've got a feeling I'm gonna need it. I rise unsteadily back to my feet, wandering back to the door in a haze. Just as I reach for the handle... Shabam! Good morning! Ah! Ah, whoa, 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 do you really have to scream in my ears first thing, Richter? I'm happy to see you too, but really. Leslie pinches his ear with a grimace, frowning playfully at me. Mm. Oh, you look terrible. Sit down, I brought some donuts. That'll fix you right up quick. Mm. I let Leslie steer me back to my chair and he stuffs a donut into my mouth. It's good, but I'll trade all the donuts in the world for a few hours of sleep. Mm. We sit in unusual, uh, in unusual silence for a little while, munching on our breakfast and sipping coffee. Normally we'd be chatting about various things right now, but I can't bring myself to look Leslie in the eye, not after last night. I've never felt so awkward in my life. Are we just going to pretend it didn't happen, or... Richter, what's the matter? Hmm? Leslie calls me out with a mouth full of donut, gazing at me curiously as he chews. He definitely doesn't seem phased, that's for sure. You look like a kid who just got caught peeping up a girl's skirts. Really? What's eating you? I don't like this silence. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. Nothing. It's nothing, boss. Listen, why don't we get started on work? We need to go over the few- the new findings. Uh -huh. He still seems pretty suspicious, but eventually nods. I can't tell if he's playing dumb or if he really can't remember. You know, it's probably the latter. About Eastman. I think we need more information on everything, including him, before we go to the FBI. If we blow our cover too early, we'll risk losing on, on more leads, more potential sources. We should play this smart. Agreed. There's a lot we still don't know. Leslie gazes up thoughtfully at the ceiling, twirling a pen around his sugar-dusted fingers. Is that speakeasy his base of operations? How many warehouses does he have? Are there any other key players in his business? I'd say we need to send out some of our agents to figure out the key details. I don't want to rush into anything. Uh, send out agents? That reminds me. What happened to Earl? The guy I sent to the scope to scope out the speakeasy yesterday. I didn't see him coming to work today, and he didn't call me like he was supposed to. Boss, I need to make a call. I sent Earl out last night, but he hasn't come in yet. Oh, all right, don't let me stop you. I reach for the phone and quickly dial Earl's home number. Ring, ring, ring. No answer. Mm, I have a bad feeling about this. I'd bet anything that he's, his disappearance is related to the speakeasy, Eastman and the Mafia. Not good, huh? Leslie seems to figure it out pretty quickly because he raises a worried brow at me. I grimly nod. Damn it, I should have just gone there myself last night. If something's happened to Earl, then we'll get some officers and head over there this evening. Boss? Just a quiet investigation at first. See if we can find anything out about Earl. If there's anything incriminating evidence, then we'll turn it into a full blown raid. But hopefully we can just... Hopefully he's just at some cat house this morning, hungover. A cat house is slang for a uh, brothel, used commonly in the early 20th century. The term cat has been used to describe prostitutes, which is possibly where cat house as a euphemism for brothel comes from. Oh, okay. <laughs> at a whorehouse. I guess it's better than saying whorehouse. Leslie gives me a small, reassuring smile. It makes me feel a little better, even though a nervous pit still shifts in my stomach. Tonight it is, then. Atta boy! Ready to go over some reports? Ready as I'll ever be. 
The rest of the day sinks into a blur of paperwork and coffee. Paperwork and coffee. Leslie and I busy ourselves with our main with our mountain of reports, so there's not much time for the awkward atmosphere to come back. Considering how I was acting, maybe nothing really ever happened at all. Maybe I just dozed off in the hotel room and had a bittersweet dream. Hello? Richter, hello? Two hands roughly shake my shoulders. Huh? When my eyes struggle open for a few seconds, I notice how dark the sky outside is. Huh? Wait, was I- There's only one of us who can sleep for half the day, Richter. Don't try to steal my thunder. No, why didn't you wake me up sooner? You were clearly exhausted. Those dark circles under your eyes make you look like a raccoon. It's cute. But listen, try to get some more sleep tonight, okay? I can't rely on a hazy partner to have my back after all. And whose fault is it that I didn't get any sleep exactly, Mr. Bright-Eyed and Bushy-Tailed over here? After we get our things together, Leslie and I prepare to head out to the speakeasy. It's already late and there's been no call from Earl, so something's obviously going on. Richter, wait. Hmm? As I reach for the door, Leslie suddenly grabs my sleeve, tugging me back a little bit. Hmm. About last night's. I do remember it all, just so you know. Ah. This bastard! <laughs> so all of today was just an act! I know, I know, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. Please don't hate me too much. But I just wanted to tell you that, well, I'm sorry. He bites his lip, averting his gaze guiltily. It's the same look he had last night, right after he kissed me. If you want, we can agree to pretend it never happened. Things could go back to normal, we'll just be regular friends, senior partner and junior partner. Neither of us will speak of it again, and we can chalk it up to me being drunk and stupid. Mostly stupid. Leslie loudly clears his throat, fiddling with his tie. Despite his self-effacing joke, I can tell he's being serious about this. Our friendship's important to both of us, so it's understandable, but... How do I really feel about things? It's not a question of liking Leslie, but last night's situation was, well... You were drunk, so I feel guilty. I definitely don't want to forget it. I definitely don't want to forget it. We are going ham on Leslie. It's happening. Like, this is the route that we're doing right now. No, boss. I don't want to pretend it didn't happen. Definitely not. Huh? Even though I don't know where things will end go from here, I, I know for sure that I like you. You liked kissing me, is what you mean. I thought that was a given. Well, you really were enjoying it. I felt that little, or should I say, big surprise between your legs. Ah, yeah, 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 good talk. <laughs> Leslie snickers at my hasty response, back to his normal smug self. But I can tell he's relieved to clear the air between us. I am too. Hey, once we're sure we're all safe, let's talk about this again, in a more private setting. Does that sound okay? It sounds great, boss. Did you just... Before I can finish, Leslie suddenly pulls me into an adoring hug, squeezing me so hard I can barely breathe. He buries his face against my shoulder, nuzzling against it. <laughs> How can he make my heart ache so much? I'll never become a hard-boiled detective if I keep getting feelings like this. Sighing affectionately, I curl my arms around him and squeeze back, enjoying the few moments of warmth we share. Hmm, okay. Leslie soon pulls back, taking a deep breath. Then we nod at each other, just like always. If we hurry, we can get to the bottom of this and still have time to get a cannoli before the shops close. Richter, you never told me you could read minds! I try to stay out of yours, too scared of what I might see! Hehe, <laughs> <laughs> clever boy! We head out side by side, determined but hopeful the partners we've always been. I have faith in Leslie, just like he has faith in me. We'll get the job done together. Welcome, gentlemen. Please enjoy your nights. Alright, we're back at the speakeasy. Loud music rushes over me in a way of the familiar sea of dancers' lights and sparkling glasses. Woo! This place is quite a scene, isn't it? Leslie murmurs at my side and we walk along, glancing around the speak. It's a little less crowded today. They must have known we were coming. Oh, low blow! As we weave our way to the bar, my attention drawn is drawn to a group of familiar figures. Those sketchy guys from the other night, but it looks like there's more of them today. Hmm. I nudge Leslie's side and jerk my chin in their direction. Hmm. He follows my subtle gesture, eyes narrowing faintly. We exchange no words, but I can tell we're thinking of the same thing. Those are Myers men. At the bar, Leslie orders us a couple drinks, just to keep up appearances. We've got to find s we've got to find some way to ask about Earl, but we can't risk being too obvious about it. Jack! Jack, you finally decided to show up. Hmm. When a certain voice calls out over the music, I freeze. Is that who I think it is, then? I was terribly disappointed last night, Jack. The expensive bottle of whiskey I got for you was my sole conversation partner. Sure enough, Meyer saunters up his usual sly grin, leaning one arm against the bar. Oh, um, I see you brought a friend. Meyer turns attention to Leslie, setting him for a few months before offering a polite nod. Hmm. Leslie does the same, sizing the other man up silently, but quickly breaks into a smile of his own. You must be Meyer. Jack was just singing you praises, and you know, I can really see why. 
Ah! <laughs> mm. Singing my praises, was he? My gaze meets Myers and he suggestively winks. Great, Leslie. Thanks for encouraging him. And whom might I have the pleasure of meeting tonight? Leslie's the name. Who? How do you do? Wait, he's giving Meyer his real name? Is he planning something? They reach around me to shake hands, each still wearing a confident smirk. How do you do? Would I be correct in assuming you're a public servant like Jack here, Mr. Leslie? You would be very correct. We met through work, actually. I see, I see. Very interesting. There's something uncomfortable about this atmosphere. What exactly is going on? And you, Meyer, what do you do for work? Curious you should mention that. I consider myself a public servant as well. Oh my, what a coincidence. I had a feeling, really. The second I saw you, I thought to myself, he's a charitable man, all right. I knew it. You may not believe this, or you may not believe this, but I had the same reaction. That noble air you have, why, it speaks volumes about you. You strike me as a dutiful sort of fellow, and I respect that. Oh god, no, something is definitely very wrong. There's no way either of them are being serious. In fact, it almost sounds like... Actually, Meyer, I have a question for you. Pausing for a moment, Leslie glances up at the clock. It's only a quick look, but it seems deliberate. Of course. Please, go on. You didn't happen to see a man around here the other night. Dark, shaggy hair, pointed nose, brown eyes, walks with a slight limp. Hmm. Meyer brushes a hand through his hair, eyes slyly drifting to one side. Hmm, it's very possible. That description does sound quite familiar. But you know, Mr. Leslie, information comes with a price. At that instant... It's the cops! The speakeasy doors fly open and a small group of officers rush in. Screams echo through the parlor. After the music cuts, the cacophony goes silent. As officers pull out their guns, the mafios grab their own pieces. Leslie, what? Richter, please. Leslie, sharp Leslie sharply raises a hand at me and I fall quiet, stunned. This wasn't the plan we discussed. I thought we were supposed to wait for more information. Unless Leslie did this because he thought I'd be too soft on Meyer. I suggest you cooperate with us, Eastman, and give us the agent's location. Hmm. Meyer doesn't seem nearly as shocked as he should be. How could he be so calm? He had no idea that this was going to happen. Did he? Alright, I'll cooperate with you. But please, tell your men to lower their weapons. I'll do the same for mine. And then we can discuss things calmly, without the threat of accidental bloodshed. Agreed. Hmm. Leslie hesitates. There's a very strange degree of trust going on here, but I get the sense that neither of them wants it to end in violence. Alright, so that part we've already done. Understood. Both of them exchange looks and simultaneously nod at their men who slowly, reluctantly, lower their guns. The tension in the room eases, but it's still far from calm. Let me preface by saying your man is safe. He's being held in the back room, properly fed and watered. In fact, he's already gotten to know most of the men. A very likable fellow. That does sound like Earl, the kind of guy that you can get along with just about anyone. Why did you capture him, then? To use him as bait, naturally. Bait? Meyer nods, giving me a slightly apologetic smile, although he looks too pleased with himself about it all. You see, after our friend Jack here showed up the other night, I was struck with an idea. I knew he was a detective before he so much as walked in the door. Your informant's working for me. So I decided to have a chat with him. You mean, back there, that was... Don't get me wrong, Richter, I was enjoying every second of it. But I've been looking for a way to work out an arrangement with the law in Cleveland for some time. You have a hard head sort here, so let me tell you. And this is the part that we've read before, but... I think it's going to change a little bit. Richter, however, I could tell he was a man of something different, not so hell-bent on enforcing the Volstead Act, yet not just the type to be bought either. I was intrigued. So I thought I'd try to work out a deal, until he cruelly decided to leave me hanging, that is. Giving him my name was what you might call a backup plan. I knew he'd put it together soon enough, and come back when he did. Capturing your agent now, that was a little more spontaneous. A little foolish too, more than likely, but it's how I operate. His lips curled in a devil-may-care smirk, and he shrugs nonchalantly. You really had this all planned out from the beginning? Wasn't it a huge risk? Of course, but a calculated one. Meyer casually waves one hand as if brushing away my disbelief. Nothing venture, nothing gained. I like to make big gambles, and most of the time, they pay off. But I've done my research on your backgrounds, your past jobs. I knew you wouldn't simply raid my menu without showing a little bit of your hand first. So you could say the chips landed where I thought they might. It's suddenly all too clear how his man, how this man became a mafia leader. He's got the right mixture of planning, risk-taking, and charm, all wrapped up in one dangerous package. Phew! I feel like a man who just got cheated out of his fortunate cards. Leslie rubs his cheek with a hand, blinkly, blinking rapidly as if to try and understand everything we just heard. I can't blame him. I knew Meyer was sharp, but I had no idea he planned everything out ahead of time. I'll admit, despite the fact that your methods are incredibly questionable, you've made me curious. You mentioned a deal, didn't you? What kind of deal are we talking about here? To my surprise, Leslie cautiously questions Meyer, one eyebrow slightly raised. I was expecting him to be furious, but instead he sounds more impressed than anything. Ah, I was hoping you'd ask that. Why don't we discuss matters privately on a neutral ground? I'll even let you pick the spots. All of us disarmed, with a few of our men waiting outside. Hmm. A moment.
confidence, if you don't mind. Leslie grabs my arm. You really trust him enough for this? Normally I'd say it's suicide, but this Meyer, he's not like any other man I've ever met. It's like talking to the chief of a big corporation, not some mafia leader. He scratches his head. I felt the same way. I don't think he means to harm us, boss. He's still a gangster, obviously, but I think he really wants to work out a deal. All this would be way too much trouble otherwise. And honestly, I'd like to hear what he has to say. Mm, my thoughts exactly. You should... You think we should hear him out then? After a brief moment of hesitation, I nod. We're playing with fire here and we both know it, but that's nothing new for us. If you don't mind me saying, Mr. Leslie, I gather you're the type to take precautions. Meyer pipes up airily and we both glance over towards him. Should the two of you not show up in perfect health tomorrow, I'm certain I'll have a big hassle on my hands. And that's not what I want, I assure you. You really did do your research, didn't you? It's a favorite hobby of mine. So that means you know what size underwear Richter wears. Boss! I'm afraid you'll have to barter for that information. Oh, you drive a hard bargain, do you? I like that. I feel like my only ally just switched his colors. Great. Just great. After a little more discussion, the three of us settle in a hotel room for our meeting spot. The unfortunate patrons who had to witness that, well, they are sent home and promise free drinks when they come back. In this day and age, that's probably enough any of them need. I can't even begin to imagine how tonight will end, but I have hope for the best. So we did Leslie's route. Oh! I hope this isn't the part where we get shot by a sniper through the window. The restaurant across the street wouldn't let my man inside, unfortunately. Ah, oh, what a relief. Oh, so we do get to see the end. Ooh. The three of us stroll into the hotel room, still followed by the tense air from earlier. Myra and Leslie have been constantly bantering on the way here, but I can't tell if it's genuine snideness or the playful kind. Well, no point in wasting any time, eh? Oh my gosh, well, I didn't realize that it was going to just stroll straight into the ending where we finally get to have a solution for both of us here, which is freaking awesome. But I'm going to have to end the episode here, guys, at the end of Leslie's route because I have to go to work. And also, this I think would be good as a little ending so both the Leslie and Maya routes coincide in one good little end episode but if you enjoyed that please remember to drop a like on the episode down below and leave me any suggestions you have for other visual novels you want to see me play if you're excited for the next episode any other random thoughts that you might have inside of your heads please write them down in the comments down there and without taking up any more y'all's time i will go ahead and let you beautiful people go goodbye my lovelies three two one go